So I actually don't have much time to do this. I have an exam that I have to leave for in like 15 minutes, but in this giant heavy box is my new server. As you can tell by the title, it's a Dell Power Edge R710. As I open the box here, I'm gonna go over the specs of this system. So I ended up paying about $180 for the server. It has dual E5649s. Those are six core 2.53 gigahertz CPUs. This system also has 24 gigs of RAM in a six by four gig configuration. I'm also opening the box in a strange way because my arm is still not really healed enough to lift stuff this heavy. Other than CPU and RAM, the system has two 300 gig SAS drives. The listing wasn't very clear on how many drive bays it came with. It said it has eight, but this computer has eight and I wasn't sure if they were talking about the caddies or physical drive slots in the system. So if we look at the front here, you can see we have our LCD, VGA, two USB or power button optical drive and some buttons here. This bay is for a tape drive, I believe, which I might end up getting at some point because it seems pretty cool. I would love to have some LTO backup systems going on eventually. We have some vents here, and we have six blank things. I don't know what these are called necessarily, but they are like just blanks, I guess, which is kind of what the listing described them as, and obviously they just fill up the slots, so it blocks airflow and keeps air flowing over the drives. These are the two hard drives. They are once again, 300 gig, 10,000 RPM SAS drives. And I believe they have Windows server evaluation loaded onto them from the company I got it from. If I open the latch here and pull the cover off, we can see the inside of the system. So obviously our drive bays here, you can see the perk card in the back, dual power supplies, and then our airflow shrouds. I'm not gonna take this fully apart just yet because I don't wanna break anything before I can actually see if it works. I guess I can pull one of the fans out though. So fan number five, we have these Nidec Ultraflow. These look like 60 millimeter fans, which are gonna be relatively loud, but the server is actually supposed to be pretty quiet. I also have rack rails coming for those. I'll unbox those later in this video, but they should arrive tomorrow. So with that said, I think I have to leave for my final now, but when I return, we're gonna go ahead and hook this thing up to a monitor and test it. So I forgot to uh, show the back side. So it looks like we have four PCIe bracket slots there. And then if we look here, we have a NIC. That's actually not supposed to have that. From what I know, this is coming with the iDRAC Express and the iDRAC Express runs off one of these internal ports. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it has the iDRAC Enterprise. I'm gonna look into it a bit more, but that's kind of interesting that that's there. Serial, VGA, two USB. I'm gonna presume that's USB 2. And then we have our dual power supplies. This one kind of arm thing on this power supply is bent, but that's not the end of the world. So if we open this up, they are 570 watt power supplies. So that's pretty neat. So why don't we plug this in and turn it on? So I don't know if auto boot is configured on this, so when it gets power, it's gonna turn on or not, but everything is plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and reach under the table and turn on the power strip and see what happens. So far, so good. So it's pretty quiet. The fans seem to be ramping down a bit more even, so pretty good. The seller on eBay sold a lot of Arctic Silver Ceramique too, I believe it is. So 
that's probably what they're using on the system, which is good. So one of the drives has two lights, one only has one. There are no red lights though, so that seems fine. I'm gonna get six more caddies and throw eight 500 gig laptop drives in. The drives are basically new, I got them from work, and they were pulled from laptops to put in SSDs. So, so like I said, this has a Windows Server Evaluation Edition on it. The hard drives are pretty loud, they're 10k RPM, like I said earlier, and I don't have Ethernet plugged in. I'll grab my Ethernet cable that's hanging from the ceiling, plug it into the first interface, and I'm going to move the camera a bit closer so we can see what's going on. Press Control alt delete to unlock. So we have server 2016 standard evaluation. Of course I'm going to be erasing all this, I'm probably going to throw Windows Server 2019 on here. And it sounds like one of the fan bearings is dying, that's the same case on my Intel Symantec server that I have. Which leads me into why I'm getting this. So this server I'm going to mainly be experimenting with Windows Server on and other things. This is going to be my like secondary server that I can kind of test stuff on versus the Symantec, which would be a kind of deployment server for things that I actually have set up and everything. So I'm not really sure what else there is to talk about right now. I get the rack rails tomorrow for this thing and we can throw the system in the rack once I have those. So I'm going to go ahead and get those rack rails and install this in the rack. So here's the R710 mounted in the rack. The rack rails came earlier, I guess yesterday, because it's like 2.30 in the morning right now. But you'll notice the rack has kind of changed a bit. There is a lot less space between the rails and the sides of the cabinet. When I went to install the rails in the rack, they were about a quarter inch too long and wouldn't fit properly. So from the beginning when I got this rack, I had everything flipped around where the back was the front basically because the back is the only side that had a functional door. The front sides and top got all destroyed basically when it was moved into the recycling center I got it from. It's a long story, but I decided I kind of wanted to have everything flipped around again. And because I needed to space the posts farther anyway, I decided today was a good opportunity to rip everything out of the rack and rebuild everything. So anyway, that explains a lot. It's been a long day of reinstalling equipment and everything, but everything is fully installed except for my Cisco switch because I have to get a thumbnail for one of my videos with that. You can see my router, my GS748T V5. So I'm not really sure what else there is to say about this. As for upgrades for this machine, like I said, I'd eventually want to get a tape drive for it, and I'm also going to get six more bays for those, and I'm going to populate all of those with these slim Seagate laptop drives. Let me grab one. They are 500 gigs, and I have eight of them, and I'd probably put those in a RAID 5 or 6. These drives have probably less than three hours of runtime on them. They're really new, and I think I said this earlier in the video, but I got them through work because we swapped out these drives for SSDs. And I also have fiber channel cards that are 8 gig for SAN purposes. And I would like to have a SAN setup and include this server in that. This will probably be a Proxmox or ESXi host or a Windows Server host. I might also throw an SSD in there for Windows Server and Ubuntu or something maybe. And because this has the same architecture as the Dual Socket 1366 test PC, I might set up the 1366 PC as like a processor node or something for hosting virtual machines with this computer. Anyway, I don't think there's much else to talk about with this machine, and I think I'm going to keep its base configuration pretty much the same with its 24 gigs of RAM, dual 6 core processors. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.